so in this video I'm going to go over configuring your Daphne inputs. It's pretty simple and easy. It's just a little different than what some people are accustomed to doing. Um, but what we're going to need in order to do this is you're going to have to have your Raspberry Pi connected to the internet and have a laptop or PC available. This is the easy, easiest way to do it. There are other ways, but this is the easiest way, so this is the way I'm going to show. So you're going to want to make sure everything's connected. You're either connected through Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter. As long as both your PC and your Raspberry Pi are connected to the same network, you'll be, you should be fine. So you're going to want to open up your network, and then you should have RetroPie listed here. You're going to open that. And then in here you're going to have BIOS, configs, ROMs, and splash screens. So you want to go to configs. It's going to list all your systems. Scroll down to Daphne. Open Daphne up. Should be the first file in here. And it's going to say DAP input. So Daphne input. You're going to want to open that up. Now you're going to have this list. Very simple file here. It's going to say keyboard because these are mostly all keyboard commands. So the, these three digit numbers that are listed, these are all keyboard commands. So the first two series of numbers on each input is a keyboard command. So if you don't, if you want to use a controller, we're not worried about those. We're worried about the third set of numbers on each input. Those are going to be your controller. Now for what we're doing, your up, down, left, and right should be fine. We shouldn't need to mess with that. What we're going to need to change is going to be your key button 1, 2, and 3, your key start 1, your coin, your key coin 1, and then your key quit. Those are the only ones we need to worry about. So to just show an image of a standard Super Nintendo style controller, this is, this is not 100% accurate because it's just going to depend on your controller and your inputs but typically with a standard controller similar to this like a cheap super nintendo usb controller the way the buttons are going to be assigned number wise and like i said this is not always the case but your x button could be zero a is one b is two y is three L is 4, R is 5, and then select is 6, start is 7. Like I said, that's not always the case. That's a standard case with, with a typical cheap Super Nintendo style controller. All controllers might have various different numbers assigned to the buttons. Um, but the key thing here is, is if a button is assigned 0, like... Sometimes the X button will be assigned 0, sometimes it's going to be assigned 1, as far as what RetroPie is concerned. But Daphne doesn't recognize zeros. So if you see back in your, your config file, these zeros right here, they all mean no input. It means there's nothing there. Daphne's recognizing this as there's nothing that's going to control that. There's nothing that's going to do anything to initiate that key. So... If our X button was a zero, Daphne doesn't care. The zero doesn't mean anything. So Daphne's going to recognize this as a one by default, if that's what your controller is recognized as. So this is going to take a little, a, a little messing with in order to get it correct. Um, like I said, there's going to be variations, but if you follow this, you should have an easy time. I highly recommend doing this on a laptop or a PC where you have your RetroPie hooked up to a TV or monitor that's close by so you can quickly test. But what you're going to want to do is, and with an arcade panel as well, this is a typical layout that I use. Um, usually through RetroArch, your normal setup with an arcade stick, this will be A, this will be B, X, Y, L, then R. Then this is select, and this is start. So, similar to the Super Nintendo controller, the buttons should register as the same numbers, or similar numbers anyway. But what we're going to want to do is, this layout that I have up here, 
I wouldn't copy this, what I have, um, unless you have an arcade panel like this. So my arcade panels that I use, that's what this config is for, is for a controller like this. But if you're using a Super Nintendo style, an Xbox, a Logitech, any of those numerous ones, you're going to have to change some of these numbers. So your button 1, 2, and 3, is it should be the earlier numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can change these and we'll test those. But the main thing you want to make sure you test, because it's the only way you can even bother testing any of these buttons, is if your coin and your start buttons are, are correct. So what you want to do is most Daphne games, especially like Space Ace or, or uh, Dragon's Lair, just use the button one for the most part. So whatever you're comfortable with, find what that button is going to register as. And it, it just takes some testing for you to, to see that it, it's, it's where you want it to be. But it should be one of the earlier numbers. Your button one, you might want it to be the A button. So it's either going to be number one or number two. And then your, your coin and your start, you're probably going to want those as your select and your start buttons. So you're going to want to put your coin one most likely as six and then your start as seven. And then your, your exit button, you're going to probably want it to be your L or R button because those are not going to be used in Daphne whatsoever. So you might want to try on your key quit, put four or five. But in occasion, some controllers, the L and R might be five and six, and then your select is seven, and then your start is eight. That's a possibility. Um, mine, I have it set as nine, because this is my exit button on an arcade panel. So this is key. This is button nine. I use a, usually a zero delay encoder. And this button is usually on pin number nine. So it registers as number nine. But like I said, you're going to want to change that to your L or R button, whatever you're most comfortable with. Because you're obviously going to need to use select and start for your coin and your start button. So I would recommend setting these two first. Having these as lower numbers, one, two, and three, or two, three, and four. Put this as 6 on coin 1, start as 7, go into Daphne, start the game up. As soon as the game boots up and gets to the main screen after it does all its, its wonderful stuff, press your select button. If you get a coin in, awesome, it's set. If you don't get a coin in, you're going to want to go back to your config and change it to the next number up. And then also change your start button to the next number up. Go back, wait for the game to boot up, press your select button, coin in, great. Press your start button. Now, as long as the coin button worked, your start button will work because start's just going to be the next number up anyway. So as long as your coin button works, your start button is going to work. As long as this is going to be the next number up from what your select button, your coin one button is. So now you're, you're great. Get into your game, whatever game you want to play, Dragon's Lair, 1, 2, or Space Ace. Like I said, most of those games are just going to use one button for a sword or attack. Uh, Space Ace, I believe, uses multiple buttons. Um, but I'm pretty sure Dragon's Lair just has an attack, the sword button. Get to a part where you need to use your sword, press your A button or whatever you, you felt you, you want it to be. If you don't hear that bump, bump, bump sound from the game... Because the game, if you're pressing if you're pressing buttons when there's no input to be pressed, you'll hear a sound in the game that's showing that you're pressing a button. So if you hear in Dragon's Lair, you're pressing the A button even before an attack sequence comes up, and you hear something in the game, it just makes a little thud sound. You know you've set the button. The button's set. So then the next thing, obviously, to test is your quit button. Like I said, you wanted to set that to your L and R, either one of your L and R buttons, since Daphne doesn't use those. So that'll either be four or five, possibly six or seven. Um, if they are six and seven, 
then your your select and start is going to be eight and nine. Just depends, like I said. So you have to play with it a little bit. It's pretty simple once you've seen this and understand that the third set of numbers is your controller. Keep your button one, two, and three as the low numbers. Your coin one and your start one as the higher numbers. And then your key quit should be the middle, one of the middle numbers, four or five or six and seven, just depending. So I hope that makes sense. It's hard to really demonstrate because like I said, every controller might be a little different. Some of the buttons might register differently, but this is pretty standard. Um, if you guys have any questions with that, don't hesitate to hit me up. I hope this helps. Like I said, it's very difficult to demonstrate this, but just showing this and explaining that's how you do it. You might have to fiddle with it a little bit, but there's not, you're not worrying about configuring 10 different buttons for Daphne. You're just worrying about your coin, your start, and your button one for the most part and then making sure your button two and three are set, and then your key quit. So pretty standard. I hope this helps. Thank you guys. Catch you next time.